This is the ancient Madukeshwara temple located at Banwasi in the Uttar Kannada district of Karnataka, India. It is a very beautiful temple, an ancient temple made in the 4th century BC. It is located in the forest of Western Ghats with Varda river flowing around it. Aihole inscription of Pulkeshin 2 refers Banwasi as Jaladurga or water fort. It has many shivlingams donated over a period of time. It was the capital of the ancient Kadamba dynasty of Karnataka in the Kunthala region with Shimoga, Uttar Kannada and Dharwar districts being a part of this ancient kingdom. Here we can see a huge Nandi in the Ritya Mandapa. This Nandi statue is a single stone statue almost 7 feet in size. It is a beautifully carved image of Lord Nandi facing the sanctum sanctorum of Lord Shiva. As usual with some time at my disposal on a particular weekend, I decided to explore the beautiful and ancient Karnataka on my royal end field. On the way, beautiful green landscapes with huge trees and green fields welcomed me to one of the oldest towns of India, Banavasi. As you can see, it is lush green with beautiful fields. Manvasi has been a cultural and religious center for Buddhism, Hinduism and Jainism and various scholars have come and studied here. The historical town has featured in the writings of the Greco-Roman writers also. The Persian scholar Alberoni and Kalidasa had also come and stayed here. According to the Mahavamsa, a Buddhist text, Samrat Ashok had sent some missionaries here. The Chinese traveler monk was in India between 630 to 644 CE and visited Konkanpura, ancient name of Banavasi. These are the various huge shivlingas made on the banks of the Varda river which surround the temple. Legend says that Kalidasa too visited Banavasi as an ambassador of the Gupta kings. His famous work Meghdoot has a reference to Banavasi. Yun Sang, the Chinese scholar has recorded that there were a hundred monasteries of both Hinayana and Mahayana sect with more than 10,000 Buddhist monks and priests in this region. He has also recorded that a monastery dedicated to the Sarvanna Siddha, that is Lord Buddha, had a huge sandalwood image of the Lord Buddha. Banavasi, the first capital of Karnataka, was also the birthplace of the Kannada poet Adi Kavi Pampa, who was born in 902 CE. Banwasi was an ideal ancient Indian metropolis representing endless tolerance and embodiment of unity. Various kings and kingdoms irrespective of their religion contributed greatly to this ancient temple since the time of Mayur Sharma in the 4th century BC. As we enter the temple, two beautifully carved elephants greet the visitor. We can find the images of warriors with armaments near the legs of the elephants which have been very beautifully carved. The delicate carvings have got damaged over a period of time due to environmental factors. Still, they retain their ancient beauty. This temple has many shrines in the courtyard, the minor shrines. The first shrine which we find is that of Lord Kuber. Lord Kuber, the god of wealth, uses the Naravahana or man as a vehicle. In fact, the image of the looks more like that of Kuber rather than the image of Kuber which is described in Chitra Sutra. Normally, Kuber is depicted as a dwarf with complexion of lotus leaves and a big belly. The Kirti Mukha demon, the lion demon, means a glorious face. He was created by the anger of Lord Shiva. The demon ate his own body and only his face remained. Kirti Mukha is a common motif in various temples in South India and particularly in this temple, Vahana, where various minor shrines have been made, each devoted to a Dikpala or the protector of the direction. In this image, we find the ears of the Lord Kuber has sea conches instead of the rings. Lord Kuber holds a mace, a pomegranate or a money bag. Lord Kuber is one of the Ashta Dikpalas or the guardians of the direction and he is supposed to be the protector of the northeast direction. This is another shrine within the courtyard of the main temple. Here we find a beautifully carved statue of Lord Ganesha. Each and every part of Lord Ganesha has been very beautifully made. Ganesha has the head of an elephant and a big belly. The statue has four arms which is common in the depiction of Lord Ganesha. We can find a snake around the belly of Lord Ganesha. He holds his own broken tusk in his lower right hand and holds a delicacy which he samples with his tongue in his lower left hand. The headgear of Lord Ganesha looks very beautiful. Ganesha was created by Parvati using a clay to protect her and Shiva beheaded him when Ganesha came between Lord Shiva and Lord Parvati. Shiva then replaced the Ganesha's head with that of an elephant. That is how the son of 
Lord Shiva as the head of an elephant. Ganesha's earliest name was Ekadanta, which means one tusk, referring to a single whole tusk and the other being broken. Ganesha's protruding belly appears as a distinctive attribution in his earlier statues, which dates to the Gupta period from 4th to 6th centuries. This is another shrine devoted to Lord Sun, Lord Surya, also called the Sun God. Two females at the feet are the dawn. The seven horses, which are made at the bottom, are named after the meters of Sanskrit Prasodi, Gayatri, Brihati, Ushanniti, Jagati, etc. The morning sun being identified with Brahma, the creator, the midday sun with Maheshwara, the destroyer, and the evening sun with Vishnu, the preserver. Surya as a deity is also found in the arts and literature of Buddhism and Jainism. The seven horses are named after the seven meters of Sanskrit, Prasodi, Gayatri, Brihati, Ushanniti, Jagati, etc. The Surya sculpture is called the Another shrine is that of Lord Shiva and Lord Parvati. Here we can see Lord Shiva seated on his bull Nandi. This is one of the most beautifully carved images in the minor shrines in the courtyard of the temple. Lord Nandi, the guardian deity of Mount Kailash, the home of Lord Shiva is seen here. Nandi is the guru of eight disciples of Nandi Natha sect including Patanjali. Shiva has a pre-Vedic tribal roots and his image is an amalgamation of various older non-Vedic sects. Shiva is known as the destroyer within the Trimurti, the triple deity of supreme divinity that includes Brahma and Vishnu. The Shivai tradition, Shiva is the supreme lord who creates, protects and transforms this universe. In the benevolent aspect, he is depicted as an omniscient yogi who lives an ascetic life on Mount Kalasha with his spouse Parvati and his sons Ganesha and Kartike. In his furious aspect, he is often depicted slaying demons. Shiva is also known as Adi Yogi Shiva, a pattern of yoga. Shiva has a serpent around his neck, crescent moon, river Ganga flowing from his hair, a third eye, a trident and a dambu. This is another shrine in the courtyard of the temple. It houses the image of Lord Indra. Indra is seated on his white elephant called Airava. He is the guardian of the east direction. He is also one of the Dikpalas. Indra is the king of the Swarga or the heaven and Devas. This is a very fine sculpted shrine with a very beautiful Kirti Mukha which we can see here. Indra is the most in, Indra is mostly referred to deities in the Rig Veda. He is associated with lightning, thunder, storms, rain, river flows and war. Indra is also a common motif in the Buddhist and the Jaina mythologies. Indra's iconography shows him wielding a lightning thunderbolt weapon known as Vajra, riding on a white elephant known as Airavat. Indra's weapon, which he used to kill the evil Vritta, is the Vajra or the thunderbolt. There are many humans in the Rig Veda which propitiate Lord Indra for various benefits. Indra is often presented as the twin brother of Agni that is fire. Fire was another major Vedic deity. The ancient Aitreya Upanishad equates Indra along with other deities with Atman that is soul in the Vedanta spirit of internalization of rituals and gods. In the Puranas, Ramayana and Mahabharata, the divine sage Kashyapa is described as the father of Indra and Aditi as his mother and Aditi as his mother. Indra married Shachi, the daughter of Danav Puloman. Most texts state that Indra had only one wife. The text Bhagavata Purana mentions that Indra and Shachi had three sons named Jayanta, Rishabha and Medusha. Sangam literature of the Tamil language contains more stories about Indra by various authors. In Shilpa Thikaram, Indra is described as Malai Venkudai Manava. The Buddhist cosmology places Indra above the Mount Sumeru.
This is the minor sign of Lord Yama, also called Yamaraja, Kala or Dharmaraja. He is the god of death. He rides a water buffalo. Yama is the Lokpala of the south direction and is depicted as a dark complexioned man riding a buffalo with a noose or a mace to capture the departed souls. Scriptures describe him as the twin of Yami and the son of the sun god Surya and Sanjana. He is accompanied by Chitragupta, another deity associated with death. Chitragupta is supposed to be the bookkeeper of the departed souls. Yama's wives differ from text to text. In Mahabharata, Vishnu Puran and Vishnu Dharmottara, Yama is married to Dhumurna, also known as Urmila. In Garuda Puran, Shamla is described to be his wife. Yama is also depicted with three wives, Hema, Mala, Shushila and Vijaya. Bhavishya Puran details Yama's wife as Vijaya, also called Shamla, the daughter of Lady Urmila. Yama is also described as the son of sun god Surya and his wife Sanjana, while Dharma was born from the breast of the creator of god Brahma. In Vishnu Puran, Yama is the son of Surya called Vivaswan and Sandhya, the daughter of Vish Vishwakarma, who emerged from the navel of Vishwakarma. In Garuda Puran, Yama's realm where sinners are punished are detailed, including in the 12th chapter called the realm of Yama. As we move further, we find another minor shrine of Lord Agni or the god of fire. Here in the shrine he is shown as two-headed god with his spouse besides him. He is also the guardian of the southeastern direction and is typically found in the southeast corners of the Hindu temples. Agni as fire is one of the five inert impermanent elements along with space, water, air and the earth. Akash, Vayu, Jal, Agni. The five elements which combine to form the material existence called the Prakriti. Agni is invoked God along with Indra and Soma. He is considered the mouth of the gods and the goddesses to convey offerings in the Yajna which is performed or the Homa. Agni is depicted as having two heads. One head signifies immortality and the other one symbolizes life. He is the link between the heaven and the earth and humans and deities. He mounts a ram. Agni was born in three levels, earth, mid space and heaven. Once Agni offended Sage Bhrigu and was accursed to devour each and everything he touched. Lord Brahma modified the curse and made him the purifier of all things. Just outside the main temple, there is a huge tree with multiple Naga images and idols. These images and idols of the Naga Deva were donated to the temple over a period of time starting from the 4th century BC till almost 16th century. These Naga stones were donated by various merchants and the princes and the kings to this temple. We found more than 50 sculptures of various deities here. The Nagas are semi-divine deities. Their domain is the under underworld, underworld filled with gems, golds and other earthly treasures called the Nagaloka or the Patalo. They are also associated with water bodies including rivers, lakes and the seas and are known as the guardians of the treasure. In Samudra Manthan folklore, Vasuki, a Nagaraja who abides on Shiva's neck, became the churning rope for churning the ocean of milk during the Samudra Manthana episode. The eternal mortal enemies are the Garudas, the legendary semi-divine bird-like deities. Vishnu is originally portrayed in the form sheltered by Sheshnaga or reclining on the Sesha, but this iconography is now extended to many other deities. The Nagas are the followers of Virupaksha, one of the four heavenly kings who guards the western direction. They, <coughs> they act as guard upon Mount Sumeru, protecting the Devas from the attacks by the Asuras. The two chief disciples of Buddha, Sariputta and Mogalanna are both called the Nagas.
this is another shrine of lord varuna the lord of the seas he is seen here seated on a makara the mythical sea creature makara is uh, a mythical creature with the trunk of a elephant body of a lion some parts of horse here again lord varuna image we find a beautiful kirti mukha made at the top the good thing about the various shrines in this temple is that puja is being offered regularly and most of the outer shrines which have been made we find that the god is normally made with his better half their spouses and their vahanas this is a very unique feature of this temple and all around the periphery of the main temple we find many such shrines here we can see the detailed iconography of makara the tail is that of a peacock the feathers we can see this is another beautiful image here we find another god with his spouse the vehicle here is a gazelle or a deer here again we find kirti mukha's icon most of the minor shrines were sponsored by various uh, kings over a period of time these are the carvings on the outer walls of the minor shrines here we can see the images of the shivalinga and lord shiva holding a snake here a lady can be seen with a musical instrument very beautifully carved this probably on the right side is the image of lord shiva with a damru in his hand seated on the bull nandi and just on the right we find varaha the car of lord vishnu who was born to take out earth from the ocean here there is a scene from krishna leela we can see lord krishna playing his flute with various gopikas around him we can also find various cows and calves enjoying the celestial music the artist has very beautifully carved the image of the cow in which body is one but we can find two different cows in the same body here we find lord rama and hanuman seated at his legs there is another panel depicting the scene from mahisasura mardini wherein lord brahma can be seen as well as lord hanuman on the left side at the center we find devi durga killing the buffalo demon mahisasura mahisasura is made in the form of a apparently a female with a human body we can see the tail of the mahisasura one of the leg of uh, goddess durga is on the head of mahisasura and another leg is on the feet of mahisasura there are two deities who are witnessing the killing of mahisasura by goddess durga just have a look at the earrings of the deities this is the minor shrine called the basaveshwara linga here it's a very small temple the outer walls are not very much carved but still we can see lord nandi on the left side some carvings on the door panel there is lord nandi basava basaveshwara waiting for his lord lord shiva on the right is an icon of some god or deity in the front we find lord nandi the bull waiting for his lord lord shiva on the right is another uh, dt uh, praying in a praying mudra as we enter the antarala or the vestibule we find that uh, the inner walls are not uh, richly carved in fact uh, there is no carving in the antarala only a small bull lord nandi can be seen there is a very beautiful shivalinga this uh, nandi bull is very small compared to the linga and is amazed as we enter the garbhagraha we find that it's a very beautifully carved multiple tiered shivalinga light was very limited it is dark inside the inner walls are plain the best thing which i liked about this place was that uh, puja was being offered regularly but uh, definitely uh, the garbhagraha can be better cleaned so that the devotee when he comes has uh, different feelings there is a view of the outside world from the garbhagraha we can see there is almost no light inside the garbhagraha and the antarala this is one of the oldest image or the sculpture in this temple this uh, image of the naga devata with 
five hoods is supposed to be from the 4th century BC. It has uh, inscriptions in Brahmi script which uh, tells us that uh, the southern region had interaction with the northern world even in the 4th century. The Brahmi script resembles uh, the script of the Ashoka times. These are probably the images of the prince who made this uh, contributed to the temple. These are the outer walls where we find various icons of the Dwarpalas, the gods and the goddesses. Here is Lord Nandi, this is Lord Shiva on his vehicle, the Lord Nandi. You can see Damru and a Trishul trident in the hands of Lord Shiva. Another beautifully carved image. This is the ram or the male sheep. Here again another image of the Dwarpala. This is a probably a gazelle or maybe a cow. This is God Varuna, the Lord of the Seas on his vehicle, the Makara. This is Lord Kuber sitting on a man. The man is used as a vehicle of Lord Kuber. Another Dikpala or the protector of the direction. This is a goat. You can see the Lord sitting. This is definitely Lord Indra sitting on his uh, vehicle, the white elephant uh, Aravat. Some other images on the outer wall. The entire temple is very beautiful. Outer walls have been carved all around the temple. These are the carvings on the outer mandapa. This is a view from one of the corners of the temple. This is the front side of the temple. This is the entrance. On the right we find two huge pillars which have been made in different uh, periods probably in the 16th century. One of the pillar bases pyramidal. The first uh, pillar is very beautiful. It has got carvings at the various tiers of the pyramid. Various figures of elephants and uh, other animals have been made here. At the top is Lord Ganesha, a very beautifully carved from single stone. Depiction of the Naga Loka, the Nagas and the Lord Nandi and uh, the Shivalinga is repeated all around the base of the huge pillar. This is a view from the entrance of the temple. This is the first pillar. Huge single stone pillar contributed by the Sundas. Uh, beautifully carved Lord Nandi can be seen at the base of the pillar with the Shivlinga, small Shivlinga. This is another view from the other side of the base of the pillar. Here again at the bottom we see beautifully carved huge elephants. The way the uh, sculptures have been made, the icons have been made on the walls, it reminds me of the Hazara temple at Hampi, where similar wall carvings, Hazara Ram temple, where similar carvings are there. We also found similar uh, icons and iconography at the Mahanavmi Tibba at uh, Hampi. So probably these are the contributions of the Vijayanagara Empire. I am not very sure but uh, somehow I find a lot of resemblance between this iconography and the manner they have been made with the Vijayanagara Empire. There is a repeated pattern of Lord Nandi and the Shivalingam besides each other all around the four sides of the base of the pillar.
one gets transported to another world when one visits, visits this madhupara temple these are some other carvings of various naga figures on the other side of the wall of the main mandapa which houses the garbhagraha as well as the image of lord nandi here we find the headgear of most of the deities is a snake and it is a multiple hooded snake these are the various nagas of the pata loka or the nether world who are the protectors of the wealth this image looks like a typical buddhist image i do not know who this actual deity is but uh, we still find remnants of the paints which were earlier used to paint these uh, sculptures on the top is our beautiful floral patterns this is how the uh, this is the look of the various carvings on the outer wall very beautifully carved luckily the images have retained their original character and uh, not much damage is there and hence we are able to appreciate the work and the aesthetics of the people who made it over a period of many centuries it is like a live panel a scroll in which each image is separated by beautifully carved pillars another image on the wall the garlands and the beads of the garlands have been very finely made i have attempted to cover as many icons and uh, sculptures of the temple as far as possible to give the viewer a virtual tour of this temple for those people who are not able to visit because of various reasons no corner of the temple has been left almost every nook and corner of this temple has been covered that is why the video has become very long in this world of instant gratification uh, these smaller longer videos are rarely watched but then that is the way i perceive the temple and their iconography and want to bring it to the knowledge of the of our countrymen as well as the people at large the world citizen the ancient beauty and sculpture of our grand and beautiful heritage this is uh, lord ganesha in all his beautiful form there is a tritsi called uh, chitra sutra in vishnu puran which uh, tells us the manner in which uh, the images are to be made and what do they represent banwasi holds a very important position in the history of karnataka it enjoys the reputation of being the capital town of the first indi indigenous kannada dynasty the kadambas so it rose to the position of a capital town during the kadambas however it was already playing the same role during the other rules of the chutus who were the feudatories of the satvahanas we find many ashoka inscriptions in south india and banwasi was one of the dominions of ashoka after the disintegration of the mauryas there were different regional powers in the north and the south india and banwasi came under the satvahanas the nasik inscription of the satvahana king gautami putra satkarni was issued from the victorious camp of banwasi 
Satwana activities around the Banwasi region is also attested from various coins and a solo Satwahan memorial inscription found here. The Chuttus ruled after the Satwahanas and Banwasi became their capital. Though there are not many inscriptions of this dynasty, however, most of those are found in and around Banwasi region only. Many of the coins have been discovered here. They were prominently Buddhist as evident from their inscriptions. After the Chutus, Banwasi became the celebrated capital of the first indigenous Kannada dynasty, the Kadambas. While the power of Kadambas was on decline, South Indian dynasty, the Badami Chalukyas, was rising. The Chalukyan inscriptions mention defeat of Kadambas in the hands of Chalukyan king Kirti 111. However, it seems that he was not able to conquer Banwasi as his victory is attributed to his son Pulkeshin II. In the Aihole Prashasti, it is mentioned that Banwasi appeared to be a water fort or a Jaldadurga due to its being surrounded on the three sides by the Varda river. Since then, Banwasi remained as a province under the Badami Chalukyas. It would have been an important province as at one point of time it was being governed by the brother-in-law of the Chalukyan king Vijayaditya. The Shigaon plate mentions that Vijayaditya visited Banwasi to see his brother-in-law, the Alupa king Chitravahana in 708 CE. Chitravahana's father, Gunasagra, was the first Alupa king who was made the governor of Kadamba Mandala by the Chalukyan king Vikramaditya I. This is evident from the Kiga inscription. Although no Rashtrakuta inscription has been found at Banwasi, but from various inscriptions it is clear that it was under the Rashtrakutas being governed by their feudatories. Banwasi area was known as Banwasi 12,000, which meant that this area comprised of 12,000 villages. Makarasa family was the first one to govern Banwasi under the Rashkutas. After them, it was Chalukya, Raja Ditya, and Chella Ketana families who governed this region. With the Kalyana Chalukas taking over most of the Karnataka into their control, Banwasi also passed under the rule of the Kalyani Chalukyas. By then, Banwasi 12,000 had gained a reputation of an important and a coveted place. It was hence administered by the important feudatories under the Kalyani Chalukyas. Another town nearby called Hangal also came under the Kadambas and was a part of the Banwasi 12,000. With the fall of the Kalyani Chalukyas, Karnataka went into the hands of two powerful dynasties the northern part to the Seunas or the Yadavas and the southern part to the Vaisalas. Both these dynasties tried their best to prove their supremacy, but none of them could succeed. Due to its strategic location being situated at the border of Vaisala and the Seuna territories, Banwasi became the focal point of tussle between these two dynasties. Both the dynasties had their smaller strengths at Banwasi, however, it did not remain there for a longer time. The Hoysala king Vishnu Vardhana conquered Banwasi in 1135 CE for a small period of time, but was later driven out by Kadamba Malikarjuna. The Seuna king Singhana II also ruled over Banwasi in the year 1215 CE. Banwasi was with the Kadambas as the feudatories of the Seunas. With the rise of the Vijayanagara Empire, later on it moved to the Sode chiefs and from there to Hyder Ali. With the, de with the defeat of Tipu Sultan, Banwasi also, along with other major portions of Karnataka, came under the British rule in 1799. Banwasi has a reference in various uh, 
ancient scriptures and there are many mythological stories about the rise of vanavasi a vanavasi kaifiyat provides a legend for the origin of the madukeshwara linga it is told that madhu and kaitaba the two demons were killed by lord vishnu on the instance of lord shiva however as both the demons were great devotees of shiva hence two lingas were consecrated after their names as madukeshwara or kaitabeshwara it is believed that an aspect of shiva himself is enshrined in these lingas there is also a story given by john wilson who gives a reference to the story of allama prabhu snubbing maya once shiva and parvati were seated in their court and chandreshwara arrived he saluted only with one hand towards shiva parvati asked shiva that everybody salutes him with two hands but why chandreshwara saluted him only with one hand on this shiva turned into his ardha narishwara form chandreshwara then turned to the right where half shiva was and saluted him alone at this goddess parvati got enraged and turned chandreshwara into a skeleton which was later known as bhringi then parvati said to shiva that she had conferred her half body to bhringi and brahma vishnu and rest are concentrated in her then who is the greater of them bhringi or shiva shiva asked parvati to send a part of her essence to the mortal world and he would send bhringi there and she might then examine its spiritual truth thus parvati was born as maya or mohini devi as the queen of banavasi king named mamakraja she became a musician at the madukeshwara temple at banavasi bhringi was known as allama prabhu at karure later on in a duel between allama prabhu he subdued the musicians of madukeshwara temple and mohini devi and obtained the title of niranjani this town of banwasi has a very rich history banwasi was mentioned by tolmi it was also known as kamudi in the kriti yuga jayanti in the treta yuga bini devi in the dwapar yuga and banwasi in the kali yuga in mahabharata it was known as vanvasa or vanvaska one of the oldest mention of this place is in the ayhole prashasti of pulkeshan 2 indicated in the inscriptions of the chalukya of badami which mentions that he conquered the town of vanvasi which was bound by river varda there is an ancient inscription about this temple at the nasik cave which uh, talks about satvana king gautami putra shri satkarni from the 78 to 102 ce issued in the 18th renal year when he was camping at banavasi the mahakuta pillar inscription of mangalesha also mentions that the chalukyan king kirti 111 conquered evanti which was the earlier name of the city of banwasi multiple uh, stone inscriptions have been found at this place and uh, some of them are shown in the later part of this video in mahabharata there is a reference of a place called vanvasaka in the southern india which most probably would have been the present vanvasi in the mahavamsa the ancient buddhist text 
it is mentioned that shortly after the third buddhist council held at patna during the 18th renal year of the king ashoka various buddhist monks were set off to different countries to spread buddhism the buddhist monk rakshita was sent to vanvasi for the same purpose the thera rakshita who had gone to vanvasa to preach floating in the air in the in between the people the adikavi pampa the celebrated kannada poet was born at this place and he spent lot of his time here the ancient poet pampa speaks of vanvasi in the following manner he says that vanvasi is full of fruit bearing mango trees finely intertwined beetle creepers full of jaji and sampiga flowers cuckoos singing melodiously at the top of their pitch humming bees smiling faces of damsels and their lovers vanvasi is full of patrons known for sacrifice enjoyment education and musical concerts he further says is it possible to take birth here if not one should take birth here at least one should be born as a small bee or a cuckoo wherever i enjoy the cool breeze of the south or hear the fine words or good music or see the beautiful flowers or meet the beloved my mind immediately remembers vanvasi the ancient chinese traveler xuan zhang in the year 602 to 664 visited konkan pura which he calls konkin na pulo after visiting the dravida current tree traveling northwards identification of konkan pura by different scholars regarding the visit of xuan zhang varies but there is a general consensus that the konkan pura mentioned by the chinese traveler is definitely this ancient land of banavasi multiple inscriptions have been found at this temple and around the various areas as already told earlier this temple is surrounded by a small fort which is crumbled now and it is surrounded on all the three sides by the river varda that is why it was also called to be situated at jaladurga which means a water fort there are about 40 inscriptions found at banavasi one of the oldest inscription is an inscription on a naga sculpture of the chutu period there is a brahmi level inscription which is found on a bead and written in ashokan brahmi script or the characters dated to the 3rd century bce there is a satvana chatya motif excavated at banavasi in the 2nd century ce with the language as prakrit and characters of brahmi this inscription is engraved over a small terracotta buddhist memorial panel found during the excavation one naga slab inscription was found during the survey by asi of the western region dated the 2nd century ce it says that uh, the language used was prakrit and the characters are nail headed brahmi it says to the perfect in the year 12th of the century of the king haritipura satkarni the cherisher of the venu venu ka daddutu the seventh fortnight of the winter's month first day of the meritorious gift of her son of a naga a tank and a vihara these three works by the prime minister kadasati nataka the disciple of damuraka the son of acharya jentaka and inhabitants of sanjayati made the naga sculptures there is another inscription on a slab leaning against the west pakara wall of the madukeshwara temple number 241 of the south indian inscriptions 
dated circa 1494. This corresponds to 1571 CE. The inscription records a gift of land by Arasadevi and son of Imadi Arasappa Udaya, the Mahaprabhu of Sode, who belonged to Kosika Gotra and Apastamba Sutra. The gift was made for the benefit of the temple of Narasimha Deva at Banavasi at the instance of Ramagappa Rajaya, son of Mahamandaleshwara, Rama Rajya, Vankata Dirajya. The letter is referred to as Karayakarta of Taddasivaya. Karayakarta Rasapayaka Uddaya was the subordinate of Ram Ganga Rava. It records may be assigned to the 16th century. The language is Sanskrit. It states that the stone kuch was presented to the god Madhukeshwara of Jayantipura for use in the spring festival by Raghu, the king of Sode. There is an inscription on a pillar in the Parvati shrine in the compound of Madhukeshwara temple which records the date as 16th century. The inscription records that the stone mandapa in the Parvati shrine was an offering of Sadashiva Rajendra of Sode. There is another inscription in the pillar of the Bhadradeva shrine in the Madhukeshwara temple. The record may be assigned to the 16th century. The record states that the service of Sadashiva Rajendra of Sode, it mentions Kanakavati, which was another name for Banavasi. There is another inscription on the outer side of the wall of the Madhukeshwara shrine, dated 16th century, which records mentions God Madhulinga. Another shrine, another inscription on the side wall of the Madhukeshwara shrine, dated 16th century mentions the gift by family of former Vodayas of Banavasi Sthala. So there are more than 40 inscriptions which have been found here. This is again the beautiful carvings on the walls of the minor shrines which we can find here. This temple is uh, has multiple mandapas. One of the most beautiful mandapa is the Nandi mandapa. Then there is a Trilok Mandapa which is uh, kept just uh, at the entrance of the Garbhagraha. A later Navranga of the Kalyana Chalukka time was constructed in the 11th or the 12th century. It has three entrances, one on the east, south and the north. In contrast of the square base pillars of the original Navranga, this Navranga hall has ornate lathe turned pillars. Local tradition mentions that it is here that Allama Prabhu defeated the dancer queen Santhala. This is another pillared hall adjacent to the main temple. As we enter this uh, pillared hall, we find multiple pillars and on the side we find the seating arrangement. It presents a very grand and a very beautiful look. As we see, the pillars are all different. Only the four pillars at the center have the typical lathe finish and are circular in shape. These type of pillars are very common in most of the southern Indian temples, particularly in the uh, during the Kalyani Chalukyas and the Hoysala period. Presently this mandap gives a very vacant type appearance. Here we find an inscription at the base of the circular column. Those of uh, the visitors to the site, if they can translate this inscription and write the meaning in the comments, I will be thankful to them. Very few people visit this temple, maybe because of this uh, pandemic. Still, this mandap tells us the beautiful time it had. 
over a period of almost 2000 years various mandapas were added by various kings over a period of time we can see latest uh, window work here very beautiful this is the main garbhagraha as we go nearer we find that the door is locked the door frame is very beautifully carved with latest windows and two beautifully carved columns on the main wall at the top we find the image of gajalakshmi with two elephants showering flowers on the goddess lakshmi very beautifully carved figure and here is the view of the sanctum this probably is lord gauri uh, goddess gauri light was very limited uh, i don't whether the image will be clear viewer or not but this is a view of the pillared hall from inside out here we can see beautiful columns beams can be seen the symmetry and the grandness of the temple transposes the visitor to a different world at the center we find the image of a yogi in a yogic position it appears that he is praying to lord goddess parvati is very strange and a different type of image a part of it has got damaged over a period of time now we are moving out of the pillared hall so we have seen the oldest kannada capital banwasi with a very rich history the sodhe or the sonde kings had contributed a lot to this temple the sonda kingdom was established in 1555 by arsappa naika a jain chieftain who ruled between 1555 to 1598 the naikas uh, brought lot of addition to this uh, temple these again are the outer walls banwasi located at 387 km from bangalore in karnataka state the nearest town is sirsi the banwasi town falls on the sirsi taluka which is at a distance of 23 km one of the oldest towns it was the capital of the king mayur sharma who was the benevolent emperor of the kunthala kingdom of the kannada dynasty this is a look of the nandi mandpa we can see a 7 feet high single stone lord nandi facing lord shiva but the head of lord nandi is slightly tilted to the right uh, left side it is said that lord nandi views lord shiva with one eye and with the second eye is towards the another mandap which houses the idol of goddess parvati the entry of this ancient temple compound gives you the feeling of entering some museum of temples and idols ornately carved pillars multiple smaller shrines each shrine devoted to the protector of a god of some direction this temple is called madukeshwara and there are various legends behind it people say that this uh, linga is in the form of uh, honey or yellowish in yellowish brownish in color that is why it is called the <coughs> madukeshwara linga of the madukeshwara temple so that is all 
about this ancient town of uh, Karnataka, the first indigenous capital of Karnataka. It is a very long video. If you have liked the video, kindly share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you.